Star Girls, what's up? And welcome back to Moonlight Tool. Today I will be finally making a mermaid. I've made a mermaid before, but it was more like a creepy siren and not a really cute little mermaid. So it's about time that I make one. And when my friend Blue Pixie made her first ball jointed doll for a mermaid, I knew I wanted to customize her the moment I saw her. Blue Pixie allowed me to print her Nixie ball jointed doll here in my studio for this video. I can't wait to be working on her. And this is my very late entry for mermaid. Or more like maroon? Majoon? Jumate? Jumate? Majoon? <laughs> Let's get started. First I wanted to show you guys the process of Nixie a little while my friend was sculpting her. Nixie has a jointed torso, shoulder joints, double jointed elbows and a wrist joint. Her tail has 8 pieces including the big tail fin. You can see how Blue Pixie is hollowing out the body here for the elastics. Here she's also hollowing out the head and cutting it up into face and head plate. Each tail piece has a bunch of sculpted little scales that took a long time to even out. After she was done and ready to print, Blue Pixie sent me the files and I'm now setting up my printer. I'm going to print her body in light blue and her tail and fins in clear blue. I'm pouring the sticky mess into the printer, close it up and turn it on. I already set up the printing files and I'm ready to start printing. That's gonna take a while. After a small eternity I'm ready to take out the print. Oh, I already see that the head plate didn't print properly, but the rest seems okay. I have to clean everything up now, and here are all the body pieces. The tail pieces took me the longest to print, but I love how the clear blue looks. Now it's time to insert some wire into the hands, so I will be able to string her later. I use a 1mm hand drill and carefully drill a tunnel through the wrist joint. Then I cut apart a pinning needle and insert it into the tunnel. I take a blob of blue resin to cover up the hole and cure it with my UV lamp. And this is how both hands looked finished. The face needs three magnets for the backplate, so I'm inserting them with a finger snap. I also add magnets to the side of her face for her ear fins. Let's see if the head pieces fit together. Yay! Perfect! Let's already string her arms. I made some tiny S hooks from thicker jewelry wire that I had and took them into the hands. I said, hook them into the hands. Uh, okay, this is harder than I thought. Oh, after losing my ability to speak, I finally got it though. I then take an elastic hook and hook some thin wire onto the left and the right side. I pull one through the right and one through the left armhole and spread them evenly. Then I thread the arm pieces onto the elastic like beads and secure it with some wooden sticks before replacing them with the hands. But it looks really funny this way. It's Miss Toothpick Hands. <laughs> okay, time for her wig. A wig cap appeared magically off camera already, as well as some nylon hair wefts in a popping pink, light green and lavender purple. I'm gluing the under hair with the pink and green wefts and keep adding the purple wefts onto the upper part of the wig. Using nylon wefts is a bit more difficult than urine hair, because the hair is very stiff, but I love the shine of the hair. I separated the front and the back and slowly start to cut the bangs shorter step by step. I'm always scared to cut them too short. Then I take a mini iron and curl the ends of the wig. 
And this is how the wig looked all done. I love the color combination so, so much. Okay, finally time for the face up. After spraying her with MSC three times and adding a bunch of micro glitter, I start by giving her some soft blushing on her cheeks. Her face is so tiny and it was really a challenge to be working on her. I also add some blushing to her lips with a smaller brush, as well as to the inner corners of her eyes and chin. Tickle, tickle. After carefully lining out her eyeliner with a pencil first, I go in with black acrylic paint and a detail brush to paint it black. This was super hard because of the small head size. I also decided to give her some light metallic green eyeshadow. For that I just used water and green mica powder. The sheen is so beautiful. Oh. Okay, time for lower lashes. These were a real pain this time, because I couldn't get the color consistency of the paint quite right. Come on, Elisa, just draw them! This is fun. <laughs> ah, help! In the end I kind of made it work somehow. Okay. Eyebrows. Those I really like to draw. I apply some dark purple pastel chalk dust first and then use thinned down purple acrylic paint to draw those fine eyebrow hairs. Oh, she looks so good already. Let's give her some white lashes. I love that look. I also decided to give her some rhinestones under her waterline and just need to gloss her lips now. I use three layers of Liquitex high gloss varnish for that. Ah, my hands are shaking because of the tiny head size. For her eyes I printed the bases in white resin because I didn't have a mold for such small eyes. I decided to paint the iris pink with white acrylic pink with white acrylic paint. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, where was I? I decided to paint the iris pink with pink acrylic paint. Then I add an iridescent rhinestone as a pupil and drop a little resin on it. I cure it and add a small amount of iridescent glitter and a golden star glitter to the eye as well. I then just dome and gloss them over. Even though the eyes are very small, I like how detailed they look. And here's the face with the eyes inserted. She looks so insanely cute, ah! Okay, time for some cute clothes. For her bra, I will use latex for the first time ever. I cut a strap from bubblegum pink latex first. It's super elastic as you can see. Then I take this special latex glue for working with it. You don't sew latex at all, you only glue it, which seems quite perfect for dog clothes. I take the glue and apply it to the top middle of the stripe. I spread it a little with a toothpick and let it dry. After it was pretty much dry, I fold it over like this and press it firmly. I do the same to the opposite side and then flip the piece over and apply glue to the middle on the front. I let it dry and press it together as well. And voila, this almost looks like a bikini top. Now I just need to glue together the back and it will hold up perfectly because the glue is super elastic and rip proof. Well, if you let it dry first properly, which I of course didn't. <laughs> After gluing it again and letting it dry, it held up perfectly though. Here you can see that I stringed the torso to be able to make the next piece. I wanted to give her a harness. I made her choker already and made a closure with a bead and a little elastic loop. I then take another stripe and try out different positions before deciding where I want to put it. I cut the stripe to the desired length and added a little ring on it before gluing it to the choker. 
looks good. I later had to remove it again though, because in the middle of making the harness, I decided to add some chains to the harness, which was a lot of fun as well. Please, please, yes, yes, yes. Gravity, gravity, do your job, please. Ah, there we go. Ah, stay, stay like you are, please. Ah, oh, I somehow have to close this now. Yeah. And transition to the almost finished harness. I love how it looks. Aww. And it's not so hard to make it in theory unless you want to add chains. I also added this little charm I found in my supply. Then I just printed some little yellow stars with my 3D printer and added one to the choker and one to the middle part of the harness. And the outfit is done! Okay, now to finish all the tail pieces. I wanted to have them as clear as I could, so I decided to gloss all the tail pieces and fins with a UV nail polish. It also makes them look almost wet, which also fits a mermic perfectly. And to finish the fins up, I added iridescent unicorn powder to them. It doesn't really show on camera that much, but it looks so, so beautiful. And yeah, that was the last thing to do. Are you ready to see the finished doll? I'm stunned as how gorgeous she turned out. Seeing the raw doll model is one thing, but actually seeing her customized is so insanely cool. Also I'm honored that I'm the first person to customize a Nixie. The name for my Nixie is Aqua, because she's as blue as the ocean. And here's my little mermaid Aqua. I'm so in love with her and I'm so happy how the fins turned out with the iridescent powder. What do you like about her? By the way, if you are interested in this doll, Blue Pixie will be selling 3D printed versions of her soon, so make sure to follow her on Instagram to not miss out. I will link her Instagram in the description box below. If this is your first time here on my channel and you like my videos, make sure to smash that subscribe button and like and comment below the video. And if you really like my videos, you can also turn on the little notification bell. And as always, I want to thank all my Twitch subscribers and patrons for their incredible support. You help me so much to realize all my projects and I'm so grateful for that. I can't wait to see you guys soon again with my next project. Until then, stay safe and have a beautiful creative day. Bye!